What's up guys, my name is Calvin Wiley and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be discussing information about Dolomites okifenokensis, which is a giant swamp fishing spider. I'm also going to be showing you how to build a basic, simplistic, very easy enclosure for one as well. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Alright, so this is a female Dolomites okifenokensis otherwise known as the giant swamp fishing spider. Another name for these spiders is Okifinoki spider. Uh, and the reason for that is because they are particularly found in the Okifinoki swamp, which runs through Georgia and Florida. Out of the over 46,000 different species of spiders on the planet, I have to say that one of my favorite groups are the fishing spiders. Now, fishing spiders are found within the family known as Pisaridae, and there are around 100 different species of fishing spiders worldwide. Now, like I stated earlier, these spiders live in the swamps and are well adapted to their environment. They live a semi-aquatic lifestyle, uh, so they live, you know, on land, but they also live on the water as well. So really quickly, do you see that strand of silk that my finger is touching? The light from my camera is reflecting off of it, but that brings me to my next point, is that these spiders do not create webs to catch their prey. Fishing spiders will, of course, use silk, just like all spiders, but they utilize it in a way that acts as almost like trip wire. So what they'll do is they will line a tree, uh, the, the bark of a tree, the trunk, and will lay down lines of, of silk. And so that when prey comes by and walks on it, it trips the silk, like trip wire, and alerts the fishing spider that prey is nearby. They can, you know, sense the vibration from the prey stumbling on the strands of silk. But not only that, they'll also use it almost like a safety line. So they'll deploy their silk, they'll place it down, and then let's say they have to jump, the silk will kind of help uh, lessen their fall in a way. It's kind of like um, if you've ever seen Mission Impossible, um, you know, when what's it, uh, Tom Cruise, you know, came down on the, uh, the wire, but yeah, that's basically how they utilize their silk. Now the diet of these spiders is very fascinating. So like most spiders, they predominantly feed on insects, but fishing spiders, oops, just walked on my camera. Fishing spiders in particular will also feed on tadpoles, small fish, and also frogs as well, small species of frogs. So now I want to talk about the hunting strategies of fishing spiders. So if you're not familiar with how fishing spiders hunt, this may be extremely cool to you. This is actually one of the main reasons why fishing spiders are one of my favorite groups, and it's because of how they hunt. So fishing spiders, I'm just going to use the giant swamp fishing spider for example, it'll rest on top of the water, its body is buoyant, it, it's unable to sink, as with most spiders, for a whole, spiders are pretty much buoyant. Um, they are natural floaties. That's what their bodies are, pretty much. Um, but the, spi the fishing spider will rest on top of the surface of the water, which uses the water surface as its web, in a sense. And like I said earlier, they don't catch insects in a web, so the water surface acts as their web. And so their legs are super sensitive to vibration, and so they're able to feel things both on top of the water and also underneath of the water as well. And so let's say, for example, an insect falls and gets trapped in the water, the fishing spider is able to read and feel out those vibrations and will actually push itself in the direction of where that trapped insect is and will eat it. And the next thing, this is super cool, uh, is that they're actually able to catch prey underneath of the water as well. So let's say there's a small fish or a small tadpole or whatever swimming underneath of the water. The fishing spider will feel out the vibration and will push itself in the direction of that small fish or tadpole and will go underneath of the water or actually push itself underneath of the water. But here's where the interesting thing comes in. So. This is not just exclusive to fishing spiders. Uh, spiders pretty much as a whole have something called hydrophobic hairs, 
Hydrophobic hairs are hairs that basically repel water off of their bodies. It just repels water off of them. And so what, what's interesting with the fishing spider is that when it goes underneath of the water because of the hydrophobic hairs, the hairs push water off of them, it repels water off, but it creates a layer of air. It creates basically a, 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 an air suit. And so they are essentially able to breathe underwater. And the way they achieve that is if you understand how arachnids breathe, it's pretty much the exact same way that insects breathe. Arachnids have tiny holes on their bodies called spiracles. And these spiracles um, allow oxygen to go through them and then through a series of tubes which then pretty much filters oxygen through their bodies and that's basically how they breathe. Um, and so this layer of air that encapsulates their bodies, um, it basically allows them to breathe underwater. And so they're able to catch the prey, they're able to walk and maneuver and, you know, basically scathe and crawl on, <laughs> on the bottom of the swamp to catch prey. It's super, super fascinating. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to show you a demonstration of what that layer of air looks like. All right, so I went ahead and prepared a nice bath for the fishing spider. So here she is. And so as you can see, that layer of air that covers her abdomen, that actually allows her to breathe underwater. All right, I think she's ready to come out. So what you just saw is pretty much what fishing spiders will do out in the wild. Now, of course, it looks so much more cooler in the wild than it does in a bathroom sink, but that is just a you know quick and easy example of what it can actually look like. So really quickly, I just wanted to share with you guys my brand new line of stickers that I have available for sale on my website. All of these are various animals that I drew on paper by hand, colored them in, and then converted them into high quality, long lasting, waterproof stickers. Just to give you a quick idea of what they look like up close, here's one of my favorite drawings that I drew of a European Hornet. All of these drawings were achieved by using these markers to color them in. If you're interested in purchasing any of these stickers, you can head on over to my website, calvinwiley.net, or you can hit the link in my description which will send you directly to my website for you to purchase them. Thank you so much to all of those in advance who end up getting one for supporting my small business. And now, back to the video. So now I'm going to show you how to build a basic enclosure for a fishing spider if you ever wanted to keep one. So this is the enclosure that I will be using for my giant swamp fishing spider. I've used enclosures like this for giant swamp fishing spiders in the past and it works wonders. Now one thing I will say is depending on the species of fishing spider that you have, um, for example, uh, Dolomites triton, which is a six-spotted fishing spider, they are more terrestrial than they are arboreal. The Dolomites hokifinokensis, giant swamp fishing spider, they are more of an arboreal species of fishing spider. So just check which species you have to make sure you, know, you are using the right enclosure. So for an arboreal species, it's going to be more vertical than it is horizontal and vice versa terrestrial it'll be more horizontal than it is vertical but i've already gone ahead and punctured some holes for ventilation as you can see there's holes throughout this enclosure and on the side here i have created a hole so that i can actually drain the water because this will be an aquatic enclosure so you would just tip the enclosure to the side to drain out the water and then you can place new fresh water inside of it.
So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a slab of cork bark and I'm going to use a hot glue gun to place on the back of the enclosure. So like I said, this species is more of an arboreal species. So this cork bark almost acts as the trunk of a tree. One thing I didn't mention is that you don't have to make an aquatic enclosure. You can actually just put substrate down and put, you know, your vertical surface, whatever that may be, a cork bark, uh, whatever. But I'm making in an aquatic enclosure. You don't have to. They do just fine in an enclosure with just substrate. But if you are making an aquatic enclosure, one thing that you want to do is not place the cork bark all the way down at the bottom because that's where you're gonna place your water. You're gonna place it a few inches above wherever you're placing it. I don't know how big your enclosure is, but let's say the water, uh, I'm gonna use this line for example, the, the base. Um, I'm gonna put the water up to there. I'm gluing this maybe right around here so that it doesn't touch the water because if it does touch the water, cork bark gets very, very moldy with humidity um, and moisture. So just be very aware of that. All right, so it's going to look something like that. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna place inside of the enclosure is this large rock. Now, I'm gonna not place the rock flat like this. I'm actually going to stand it up. And so what this is going to do is it's going to allow the fishing spider to rest on the rock, allowing it to have dry land and also to hunt on the water as well. So it can actually have its back legs gripped on to the rock and then have its front legs on top of the surface of the water to be able to feel vibration. So I'm just going to place that right here. So the fishing spider will be able to rest on the cork bark and then will be able to come down on dry land and rest on the rock as well. Okay, and the next I'm going to add some stones at the bottom of the enclosure for the base. Now you might have just noticed that I skipped the part of me pouring the rocks in, and that is because at the time of me recording this video right now, it is almost one o'clock in the morning, so <laughs> I didn't want to be too loud with this, so I went ahead and kind of gently placed them in by my hand, but this is basically what your enclosure will look like. Now, of course, you don't have to follow it to a T. You can do your own thing, but this is typically how I create aquatic enclosures for giant swamp fishing spiders. Last but not least, you are gonna add your water. All right, and as you can see, the water is not touching the cork work. So that is good. All right, last but not least, we are going to add our fishing spider to their enclosure. Perfect. Now, when it comes to feeding your fishing spider, obviously they will feed on insects for the most part. But in the past, I have actually treated mine to small fish such as like minnows and goldfish, they will happily feed on them, uh, especially obviously if you have an aquatic enclosure. Don't put the fish in a dry um, enclosure if you are housing yours with, with just substrate, which is fine, you can house yours with substrate, I've, I've done that before, but you know, only feed them fish if it's in an aquatic enclosure for obvious reasons. If you are choosing to do the aquatic method of keeping a fishing spider instead of just housing it with substrate, just be mindful of the water because after they eat, uh, you know, tiny pieces of food will be left in the water and that'll over time uh, decompose and get all disgusting. And so, like I said, that's why you have this drain hole so that you can just tip over like this and 
pour out the nasty, disgusting water and put in fresh new water. So that's really the only con with the aquatic method is just changing out the water. But the pro is that you don't have to spray your spider with water to drink from. They can just obviously drink it from the bottom of the enclosure. Um, and so, you know, keeping a dry enclosure with substrate for your fishing spider, you obviously have to spray the enclosure with water in order for them to drink. So that is going to conclude today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions about fishing spiders or any care tips that you need uh, help on, just feel free to ask me in the comments and I will try my best to answer them. So if you enjoyed the video, if you could please leave a like and a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications. That way you're alerted every time that I post a new video. Follow me on Instagram at Calvin Wiley and also on TikTok at Calvin underscore Wiley. Check out my website, calvinwiley.net, and I will see you guys in the next video.